Let's get back to our big story, though. Some shocking allegations in the ongoing Ontario gas plant saga. Tories say that the uh, senior Liberals tried to sway the Speaker of the House over a contempt motion. Thousands of emails have surfaced, uh, some suggesting involvement of the Premier, Kathleen Wynne, in that cancellation. The scrap plants have uh, so far cost taxpayers nearly $600 million. So joining me with her take on the latest, Candace Malcolm, Ontario Director of the Canadian Taxpayers Federation, almost $600 million. We don't expect it, at this point, do we expect it to get any larger? I, I think it will. I think that there's going to be a new Auditor General uh, report about the other gas plant uh, coming out in September. I forgot about and, that one. And uh, I think that we're going to find out the true cost there. It's probably going to be much higher. I think uh, I, I, we have a hard time trusting Liberals on anything they say at this point because uh, Premier Wynne repeated over and over again that she wasn't involved in any conversations, she wasn't in any rooms when we're talking about the cover-up of the gas plants. Then these emails surface and her name appears hundreds if not a thousand times. Uh, so clearly she was involved and all, all this information is surfacing at a, at a very bad time for the Liberals. Yeah, except that it took months and months to get all these emails together and they're go it's going to take long, 30,000, 40,000 emails to go through them all. That's right, yeah, but I, I'm just talking about how we're having uh, by-elections this week right. in, in Ontario, so I, I think it's bad time for the Liberals. I think that the um, by-elections are going to reflect that, and I, I think this is going to carry over. Uh, people across this province are just, they've had enough. Uh, this shows a, a broad pattern of, of bullying, of arrogance, of, of total uh, disrespect to taxpayers in this province. Uh, all, all this information that has been uncovered in these uh, emails j just re reinforce uh, what we already suspected about these guys and, and, and the way that they act. It's interesting. We had scandals before with the same government. I mean, e-health and, and Orange and all those kinds of things, all adding up to billions. This one seems to just go on and on and on because it's death by a thousand knives. They find more emails that implicate the government. Yeah, it's, it's sort of never-ending. And uh, as bad as it was, uh, I think, last month when we thought that all these emails had been deleted and that the Liberals were going to get away with this, I, I think it's even worse now that we can actually see that just the kinds of backroom conversations that were going on, uh, the way that the, the, the Liberals sort of bully uh, th their way, you know, going to a speaker and saying that they had to change the, their decision about uh, the contempt decision um, with uh, Minister Chris Bentley, mm. it, it just really reinforces that, that sort of pattern of, of arrogance and, and, again, bullying, uh, that they can just get their way and push it through, and that the, the taxpayers and that the voters of this province would never find out. Yeah, but it's, it's not going to change anything because there's only five by-elections. I don't think you're going to see a change of government. Will, do you think, this force in an election come the fall, a, a general election? Well, I, I, I was sort of predicting a, an election uh, in the spring, so I was mm, a little yeah. surprised when that didn't come down. And, you know, it came down to Andrea Horvath, the leader of the NDP party, who uh, just didn't, didn't think it was a good time to go. So I, I, I think that as this uh, mounts and, and more and more outrage and, and things uncover uh, about things that the Liberals have done, I, I think they'll have a hard time holding that balance of power. And uh, I, th I think they're going to have a really hard time explaining to, to taxpayers why they should be reelected. Uh, when, when the next general election does happen. Probably true of the NDP, too, because in the last budget they got everything that they wanted in terms of dollars and cents, and that's how they got the support. Right, it was almost like they were bribed, despite the fact yeah. that everyone knew that the Liberals were in this really hot situation with the gas plants and, and, and everything else that had come out. Uh, you know, the NDP were, were able to, to get a lot of what they wanted out of the budget, and they decided to look the other way on all this sort of corruption and, and waste and, and these terrible gas plant allegations uh, and, and go along because they got their, their goodies, their uh, auto reduction and, and whatnot. So I, I think that, you know, I, I, I really don't see that happening again. I think that the NDP need to be a bit more principled and, and tell Premier Wynne and the Liberals that you know the, the, the game is over and uh, it's time to face the broader uh, um, uh, citizens of Ontario in an election. No question about that. But in the terms of the by-elections that we've got right now, summer election, by-election happening, I mean, a lot of people are not going to show up. Is it your sense that Ontarians are upset enough to throw these even just these five by-elections out and get rid of the Liberals totally. I, I'm sensing that not only from our supporters and the emails that I've been getting, uh, but from the polling generally. I think that the Liberal, these, these were five safe Liberal seats. Uh, these mm -hmm. were uh, former cabinet ministers and other, the Dalton McGuinty seat it, it itself. Uh, these were, these were, you know, countable Liberal seats and, and now according to the polls, uh, they're, they're down in just about every riding. So I, I don't know what it'll look like on Thursday given that it's August 1st, it's a long weekend um, and a lot of folks just aren't going to show up to vote, but I think it represents the sentiment of Ontarians that they're not happy with this Liberal government and uh, they're, they're going to send them a message. Let's see how it plays out, Candice. Thanks so much. Thank you, Pat. Candice Malcolm, uh, Ontario Director of the Canadian Taxpayers Federation.